In part one of this two-part series, I talked about how to optimize your exposures and your accuracy for using Harman Direct Positive Paper with a large format camera. Specifically about making sure you have an accurate shutter on your lens and making sure you know how to adjust your focal ratio readings for the actual focusing of the camera and how to use a light meter properly for using uh, this paper in order to get some good exposures. This video, part two, I want to talk a little bit about how to determine the film speed, if you will, what we would generically call the ISO of Harman Direct Positive Paper. Keeping in mind, of course, that Photo papers don't have an ISO value. They're not rated for a speed rating as an in-camera film. And consequently, we have to determine through empirical testing our own working film speed. And this has to do with uh, the kind of developer we're using, the dilution and the temperature of the developer and the developing method. And most importantly is the quality of the light that we're going to be using to make our exposures. All of these have to do with the sensitivity of the paper, how it responds to light and the developing process. So in this process of trying to calibrate or determine the working paper speed of our Harman Direct Positive Paper, we want to keep as many of the parameters constant as we can. In other words, we're going to pick a developer, we're going to use the same dilution, we're going to make sure it's a proper temperature, and then we're going to use the proper metering techniques and using the proper actual working f-stop of the camera with it focused, as I described in detail in part one. Now let's talk about how to do this empirical iterative testing for your paper. Now over the years as I've used Harman Direct Positive Paper in a variety of cameras from regular view cameras like my Speed Graphic to homemade box cameras etc. I've used a variety of um, ISO values to get an exposure and I've gone anywhere from uh, ISO 1.6 all the way up to about ISO of 8. And you might ask yourself, why such a variation? Uh, there's a little variation in terms of the concentration of developer and the temperature of the developer. Um, I discovered after a few years of struggle that you need to decide upon a, a specific kind of paper developer and a dilution and stick with it. And also you need the temperature of that dilution of that developer to be uh, room temperature close to 68 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, 20 degrees centigrade, or whatever it says on the on the package uh, for the developer. Um, it's very important you get consistent temperature and dilution. Now I happen to be using a liquid concentrate developer. Now Dectol or one of those powdered developers that's mixed from powder is fine, but for my purposes I don't shoot enough of this paper to warrant mixing up a, a stock solution from powder. And the reason why that stock solution only lasts a couple months. And uh, you're going to throw out a whole gallon of developer unless you use it. So I prefer the liquid concentrate developer. They last a lot longer. Now I pour mine, I buy them the Ilford uh, multi-grade or universal paper developer. Comes in a plastic bottle. I pour it in brown glass bottles so that it'll last a lot longer. There's no air in it, right? And then I just use one of those bottles at a time. Um, and I've, I'm using a ratio of a 1 to 15 developer with water. And I'm using a Jobo tank uh, that only needs about 100 milliliters of liquid uh, as in a rotary processing. So 100 milliliters of water, I add 6.6 .6, uh, milliliters of concentrated chemistry. That's about a 1 to 15 dilution. Um, I try to make sure that the temperature is, as I said, 68 Fahrenheit or 20 C consistent. I'm always using the rotary processor for three minutes. So everything is the same. You do everything the same. So what I did to test my paper speed on the Harman paper is I'm going to set up my processing, my dark room or my, in this case, a changing bag and a, a, a developing tank and my little containers of chemicals. I'm going to get it all set up and ready to go I take the camera out, I set the camera up on a test target, in which case I was using my trellis, as I showed you earlier, and I'm going to meter the scene with my meter. I'm going to use my accurate uh, 
aperture method of knowing what the true focal ratio is of the uh, camera when you focused it using the little chart as I showed you earlier. So that's all done. I'm going to start and now this is an iterative process. Iterative means you're going to you're going to start with a, with an assumption of what you think what the ISO is. You're going to meter it based be meter the scene based on that guess. You're going to go through the whole process of exposure, processing the paper, and then evaluating the results. And if the picture is too dark, you're going to lower the ISO and retest. If the picture is too bright, you're going to raise the ISO and retest and you're going to do a series of iterations until you dial down to a picture that is really good and that'll be your working ISO of that paper. Now I did an initial test for this video of my trellis scene at an ISO of 6 and what I ended up with was a scene where the highlights of the shed in the background are okay, but the dark wood is way too dark for my purposes. So I, again, the picture's too dark. What do you do? You lower the ISO and retest. So I lowered the ISO. I did the whole thing over again the same way. Don't change anything but one thing, which was the ISO. And this is how I came to my ISO of three, okay, of this paper. Now, since I've just told you that my ISO was three, you're probably thinking, I don't have to do the testing. Joe says the ISO is three. I'm going to go with what Joe says and I'm going to use that value. Well, that'll get you in the ballpark, but keep in mind that I'm using Ilford multi-grade developer at one to 15 of a certain temperature. My rotary processing may be different than your tray processing or whatever, but there's a bigger variability to this whole thing than simply the way I do it versus the way you do it. And that is last summer, I was using this very same paper, very same developer, very same rotary processing system. Everything was the same, and I was using an ISO of 8. But now, <laughs> I have to use an ISO of 3, and in the depths of winter, like December, January, in the Northern Hemisphere, I've had to go down to even to an ISO of 1.6 or 2. And the reason why is, this paper, like almost all photo papers, is only sensitive to blue and UV light. And so your light meter, however, is sensitive to the entire spectrum of visible light. So when you're metering your scene, you're getting a lot of light in here that isn't the actual light that the paper is sensitive to. And so you're only really interested in the blue and UV light, which you can't really easily see. You're going to have to kind of indirectly gauge that. But let's just say in the winter time, you don't have as much UV and blue, UV light in the sky as you do the summertime. Uh, if you live in cloudy, gloomy Portland, Oregon, or Scotland or someplace where it's always rainy and gloomy, you might find you'll never get up to an ISO of eight uh, with this paper, even in the bright summertime. So again, the quality of light has a lot to do with what the working ISO is. I've even found, even in the summertime, if it's clear out versus if it's cloudy out, my ISO is going to be a little bit different. And so when you're doing these iterative paper speed tests, you want to make notes about what kind of light am I shooting and is it a clear sky or is it cloudy skies? Make a note of that. When you come up with, in my case, ISO of three, that was actually a cloudy day. Cloudy day in March in the Northern Hemisphere. Make a note of that and make a note year round, maybe do one test every quarter, every season, quarterly season and see how that ISO value changes. So the most important thing you need to know about why we have to manually figure out the working speed or the ISO of the Harman paper is because the spectral response of this paper to ultraviolet light is not captured by a standard light meter. Standard light meters are designed to capture, uh, to read a spectrum of light that's equivalent to panchromatic film, which is essentially the visible spectrum of light. This paper is sensitive to regions of light that the meter can't see. And so we're only getting an indirect sense of the scene's brightness relative to what the paper sees by using a meter. That's why you need an accurate calibration of the paper in different seasons 
and even whether it's direct sunlight or shade, because the amount of UV light in those different situations isn't necessarily reflected by the meter. One additional thing I wanted to clarify from part one of this two-part series was <clears throat> I mentioned in part one about metering your subject. And for instance, if you're doing a portrait metering the face of, of your subject, I might want to add here that to get the proper exposure on a face, you want to not just use the uh, default setting. Uh, so for instance, if I meter my face and I zero the needle, um, I'm going to underexpose my face a little bit because faces like, especially mine, uh, red tones or darker brown skin people, uh, the those reddish end of the spectrum, this Harman paper is not sensitive very much to. So you have to look at the color of your subject also. Remember, it's mainly sensitive to blue and UV light. So in the case of a uh, subject such as uh, human flesh, I'm going to overexpose a little bit, uh, maybe two-thirds to even a full stop over what the meter says in order to get enough exposure for uh, my skin tone to come out normally. And you'll see uh, this, if you do practice portraits with people, you'll notice if you give it a default exposure, meter the face and just use that, it'll come out a little dark usually. Um, and uh, so give it a little bit more exposure for the faces if you need to. But again, you have to experiment with it. And uh, there's a lot of experimentation involved in using these materials. Uh, that is one of the satisfying things about it if you're a hands-on kind of a person is the iterative nature of testing the paper different times of the year. As I said earlier, the ISO of the paper changes throughout the year because of the quality of light, the amount of UV light in the atmosphere changes. Uh, and so you have to get uh, different uh, calibrated ISO speeds for different lighting conditions. In another uh, episode or another uh, video in the future, I'm going to cover how to use Harman Direct Positive Paper indoors under controlled lighting. And so under those circumstances, we won't have to worry about a seasonal variation. Well, I know this was a long and rambling video, but we haven't talked about photography in a long time, especially about using Harman Direct Positive Paper. But I wanted to encourage you guys this paper you can get really good results with, but you've got to be consistent in everything. Consistent metering, consistent in the actual working aperture ratio of the camera. You need that because this paper has a, a very narrow dynamic range and narrow exposure latitude. You don't have the same flexibility that you do with sheet film. So that is my advice for you guys in using this paper today. If you have any questions, leave comments below and I'll try to get to them. Other than that, you have yourselves a great day.